there, it's Jane here, and you might be surprised to see that today I'm actually up at the allotment. It's heading towards the end of January, and I've promised myself that even if not much is going on, I'm definitely going to see if I can fit in a monthly tour each month, just to have a record of how things have changed. So, at the moment, it might be that there's not a lot to see, there's certainly a lot to do, but it will give us a marker to see how things are doing as the year goes on and something to look back on next year. But I tell you what, it's been the most beautiful, beautiful winter's day. We've had blue skies, we've had a hard frost overnight, but it's blooming nippy. So fortunately for you, I might be moving through this video quite quickly. So let's make a start. I must admit, I nearly didn't show this bit. I thought I could cut this bit out, but <laughs> to be honest with you, I've always been warts and all. You've always seen the good and the bad, I like to think, up at the allotment. And so now I'm going to start this tour with what I can only describe as an embarrassment of greenhouses. Okay, but if you think about it, it's only the start of the year and there is room for improvement. And I promise, they are on my list of things to do. So let's just go in and have a look. Okay, well, here's the double greenhouse. Not too bad, you might think. Just a few things to clear away. Little bit of pruning, a little bit of clearing up. This one's not too bad. I'm building up. Can you tell I'm building up to the next one? <laughs> okay, let's take a look. There we go. As I say, I can only apologise. It has become a bit of a dumping ground, but things in there have got a purpose. These are my dahlias here, undercover, and there's some potatoes under there, and everything else will be sorted out at some point. Look, there's gloves there, so, you know, things have been done. But yeah, this is definitely on the to-do list because in about a month's time, this is going to be the heart and soul of the allotment and there's going to be so much going on so i really better get my finger out and get it sorted okay well here's the second main job that needs sorting out we've got our wonderful fruit cage not netted yet as you can see from gardening naturally and as i pointed out in that video i'll put a link up to the bill somewhere if i remember um this is where we are now going to have all our not all of our soft fruits but most of our soft fruits which means we're going to have to move these strawberries out of here to their new patch at the top of the plot which i'll show you in a moment and we're going to have our autumn fruiting raspberries here we're going to create an extra bed along the back there let's see if i can walk through the door <laughs> <laughs> an extra bad bed along the back here for the gooseberries okay so that'll be about three foot four foot wide and then down this side here we are going to remove the summer fruit and raspberries and do with them i know not what yet we might manage to give them away to someone we might find a little spot for them but that's going to have the black currants in so hopefully this year We'll actually get a harvest of currants, goosey gogs and raspberries before the blackbirds eat them all. But yeah, that's definitely one of the first things we need to do this year before March, really. Uh, but it's just too soggy at the moment to do anything. This first bed here, where we've got our tayberry and our blackberry, and a whole host of um, strawberries that we've put in as runners that have basically taken over the place. That's all going to be moved as well. That is going to be my dahlia bed because we are hopefully going to push it. Do I say hopefully a lot? I think I do. <laughs> I think that's because I'm constantly in hope. Um, the dahlia, not the dahlia, the tayberry and the blackberry will then be transferred to this bed and this next bed or alternate beds but we're going to have two arches not quite sure where we're going to put them yet but one's nice ones you can walk underneath one to train the tabry up and one to train the blackberry up so yeah again sorting out the fruit the blueberries in the blueberry bed were 
what I can only call unremarkable last year. They produce the odd bit of fruit, but not enough really. So we're going to make sure that this year they get a full whack of aerocaceous compost um, because they do like their acid soil. They've got some lovely salvias planted in between. But yeah, they didn't come to much at all. I actually kept the uh, branches off the Christmas tree to put on them and put them in a black plastic bag to bring up to the allotment. And of course, one black plastic bag <laughs> looks very much like another. <laughs> And well, you can imagine where they ended up, can't you? But they're not going to end up on my blueberries this year, let's put it that way. The black currant with the red currant behind it there are actually budding already. Um, which is a bit worrying at this time of year because we are having such hard frosts. But I'm not going to prune them or do anything else with them until we actually move them into the fruit cage. So basically anything to do with the currants is on hold at the moment until everything gets sorted out. And the same with these gooseberries. They are desperately in need of a prune. They were pruned last year, but clearly they need doing again because look at all those branches there sending out there. I mean they look very healthy. I mean the sad thing is they obviously like this bed but uh, they are going to have to get moved at some point. So yeah the pruning will have to wait until then but if we look on here actually excuse the shaky camera these are budding well as well now. Yeah so it shows we've had it fairly mild so far. Whether these will survive the hard frosts I don't know. This is where the broad beans were last year that did very well and this year it's a nice empty bed ready for um, courgettes so they're going to have a whole bed to themselves and then in the distance you can see the garlic which are planted back in November I think again I'll put another little link up to the video and, and it's all coming through apart from the elephant garlic which if I show you it's taking its time, but you can see it's actually popping the whole clove out of the soil. Is there really what I need to do at some point? Just cover that up a little bit. And you see. But the rest of the garlic is standing up to our winter quite well so far. Look at those little soldiers. And then there's this. And don't get too excited because <laughs> nothing's going to happen yet but there's a whole other story attached to that which I'll tell you about another time. And the last bed at the top end is probably going to be my most exciting bed this year and that's going to be our asparagus because it's been in there now for two years and so this is its third year and this is when we're actually going to be allowed to pick it. So at the end of the season last year I just chopped down all the ferny top growth, dropped it on the top and it won't be long, fingers crossed, before we're able to start to pick our own asparagus spears and that, if I tell you, that has been a dream of mine for so many years. Okay this is the first of the large beds and this is where we're moving half of the strawberries to. Then this bed basically this year is going to have uh, brassicas, leafy greens and roots and there'll be some of you out there saying no you shouldn't plant them alongside each other but the thing is this bed is big enough for you to be able to put things in and have a huge distance in between them so I think we'll be okay. So that's this side and then on this side if we can walk across our pile of soil it's still to get put on. The other half of the strawberries are going to go here. The last of the Cavallo Nero, which as I've said over the last few months has just been a superstar. And the kale beyond. This is going to be all our beans and peas in this one plot. So let's walk you around. Here we are, we're on a wobbly ship. Yeah, this is going to be a really good bean area. I think one of the problems we had with our beans last year was um, they just didn't get enough sun. They were up at the top end up there 
and not only were they planted late and they came on late and everything but they didn't get enough sun so if they can't grow here I don't know what we're doing wrong but hopefully fingers crossed again we'll get a nice crop of beans and peas this year okay let's carry on up camera bag apple, apple tree looking very sorry for itself there isn't it but it'll be fine just at the top end of this plot still digging up leeks which are beautiful nothing says a winter garden like a good old leek <laughs> And, uh, oh, speaking of which, look, I'm just going to turn you around very slowly. The sun's starting to go down now. So slowly so you don't get seasick. Right, OK, on the opposite side of the leeks, we have still got a good few carrots to come. So we might be taking a couple of, ho of those home for tea as well. And the failed bean plot from last year, which was here, this year that's going to have sweet corn that is going to be done in plenty of time for it not to become too leggy and I'm not going to let the mice eat it. <laughs> Note to self. Sweet corn at the back, leeks and onions at the front here and basically whatever we've got left in the middle. So again that should be a really productive area. All the areas now have had, um, I'm saying all the areas apart from this one here, have been topped with cardboard and have had some of our council compost on the top which isn't the best compost but if you are trying the no dig method it is brilliant for adding um well depth to your soil and just it has made a difference to our soil already you might want to put manure on shop-bought compost your own made compost as well but this just adds a bit of body to whatever you've got so yeah year on year we are building up those layers of cardboard and compost and it's working Nothing to see in the polytunnel, but at least it's cleared out now. These are just weeds I took out from the side that I'm letting um, dry off on those racks and then they can be composted. But other than that, it will be tomatoes again in here this year and peppers. And I'm going to try again with the melons because our neighbour grew a couple of really good ones. So yeah, something else to try. And now we're heading up to the top end of the plot that you don't usually see because it's usually in a bit of a tip. <laughs> it still is. If you look here, here's our poor old banana palm. It looks like it might have had it this year. We've wrapped it. You never know. Something could come of it. This is where our sweet corn was, well, dumped last year because it was a last minute attempt to get anything and it didn't come to anything. So this year, this is going to have a big pile of manure on it and that will be our rhubarb patch. The raspberries behind it are our autumn fruiting raspberries, which will go down, back down to the fruit cage at the beginning. We've got the fruit trees here. So we've got our beautiful, beautiful russet. I can't tell you how lovely those are. We've got a pear at the back. We've got a damson and a plum. Have a look at my poor old table. I mean, when you think back to last summer when I was making nice salads from the garden, it looked so nice, but look at it now. I think it needs a new top, do you? We'll have to sort it out before um, this summer. Um, yeah, and then, oh yeah, this bit here, which is sort of a no man's land, which is where I've had my hammock and things like that. Um, so you think the back of the sweet corn will be there. We've then got this area here. And every year we say we're going to do something with it, but it just gets absolutely, can you see, bombarded by apples from that apple tree. So I reckon this year, well, definitely this year, I'm going to plant this up with um, medicinal herbs. Because I'm quite into my, oh, look at the state of that chair, <laughs> quite into my herbs at the moment. Uh, well, I always have been, as you know. But yeah, medicinal herbs, um, I'm reading more about and getting more interested. So things like um, echinacea, elecampane, this sort of thing, I'm going to have here. So they can grow as perennial herbs that won't need a lot of looking after, hopefully. And I can leave them to it. And hopefully, it, well, again, if they do well in the soil, they do well. And I'll leave them. If they don't, I'll swap them out for something else. But this can be my proper little herb patch. And then this at the top, trees on the left here, like I say, which 
which are soon going to be covered in buds and blossom. I mean, you know, I'm saying this now and you're probably thinking, Jane, they just look like a bit of a tip, but they are going to be beautiful. But actually what I've seen, which is really, really one of those signs of spring that you can see is on the way. Let me see if I can see any now. Look at all these. Look at these coming up. And I know from past years that this is soon going to be blooming with narcissi, with bluebells, with little tulips, and it'll be a wash with colour. <laughs> Instead of dead apples and leaves, you know. But yeah, look out for those signs, they're everywhere. So there we have it, a relatively short tour of what's happening in the allotment at the end of January. And where there isn't much going on in the soil, there's plenty going on behind the scenes with planning and dreaming of what's to come. Hope you're all okay wherever you are. See you soon.